Watch this. Grab uh, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, mm -hmm. a centurion of the band called the Italian band, mm -hmm. a devout man and one that feared God with all and with all his house. It's a Gentile. Which Don't let these Hebrew Israelites lie to you. We talked about it last week. <laughs> they try to lie to you and say, "Oh yeah, the Grecians was Gentiles." And this, that, another year. No, they not. Nah. I mean, uh, the Grecians was uh, uh, Israelites. You know what I'm saying? When they say Grecians, it's talking about Israelites. When they say Gentiles, it's talking about Israelites. No, 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 it's not. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? Of the Italian band. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. Keep going. Which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. We're going to deal with that, too, though. You know I ain't going to let that. I ain't letting these Hebrews like slide, just like I don't let these Christians slide. We're going to deal with it. Let's read this, and let's just pretend this is an Israelite, right? As we read it, let's just see if this makes sense, that this is an Israelite, right? So this is an Israelite that's with the Italian band. An immigrant. Sometimes the immigrant, they join the army. All right. All right. So this is an Israelite that joined the Italian army, and he's fighting beside the Italians, right? Let's keep going. Watch this. Let's just play this thing out. Let's see if it makes sense. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house. So this is an Israelite that feared God with all his house. Right? Which gave alms to the people and prayed to God always. He always prayed to God. This Israelite dude. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? I ain't letting nobody slide. So, all right, let's go back. So this is, we, we dealing with, in reality, this is a Gentile. But let's just pretend for the sake of argument that we're looking at an Israelite. So this Israelite is devout, a man of God. He and his whole house prays to the Most High God. This Israelite, he just happens to be in Italia. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That boy's in the, he's, he's an Italian. You know what I'm saying? That boy's in the Italian band. I don't know what he's doing in Italia. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. Watch this. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Uh -huh. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, uh -huh. whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what you ought to do. That's right. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. That's right. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Okay. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went up went up upon the house to pray about the sixth hour. Okay. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Mm-hmm. And he so saw, now Peter is having a vision. Watch this. And he saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending upon him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners. Okay. And let down to the earth. Okay. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Mm -hmm. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Mm -hmm. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So the Most High God showed him a vision of animals that are unclean and told him, Go ahead, kill them and eat them. Right? Go ahead. Go get your butt over there and kill them and eat them. And the most I got I me and Peter said, man, listen, that don't make no darn sense to me. And there came a voice to him, arise, Peter, and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Mm -hmm. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. All right, so three times this vision repeated. Each time, most High God said, if I call it clean, don't call it unclean, right? If I've cleansed it, don't you call that thing unclean, right? Remember, we're pretending that this is an Israelite. Let's just see if the rest of this story makes sense. Let's see. Keep going. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, Peter, understand, Peter had no idea what, what God was trying to tell him in this vision. The men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate uh -huh. and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Okay. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, 
three men seek you. Arise, therefore, and get down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. All right. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am whom you seek. What is mm -hmm. the cause why you have come? Mm -hmm. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man and one that fears God, is a good rapport among all the nation of the Hebrews, of mm -hmm. the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for you into this house mm -hmm. and to hear the words of you. All right, so now we're pretending still that this is an Israelite. So Israelites sent for Peter to come. They both Israelites. Watch this. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Mm -hmm. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, he had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Mm -hmm. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Mm -hmm. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. He said, I myself also am a man. Right? Watch this. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Okay. And he said unto them, you know how, you know how that it is an awful thing, an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come to another nation, come to one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So now just talk to me now. If this is an Israelite who is devout. I under, listen, I would understand if this was an Israelite that just was like, I want nothing to do with Israel. I want nothing to do with my God. I'm Hellenized. I see myself as a Roman. Maybe then Peter would say, I ain't got no business messing with you. Because you as good as a Gentile. But that's not the case here. Books say this man is devout. Pray every darn day. And you mean to tell me Peter came in and look at the man? Same skin color as him. Same nation, they worship the same God, and he look at the man and say, it don't make sense for me to even be dealing with you. A man of another nation. I just don't understand what these people see when they read the book. Oh, no, man. That's the book is very clear. It only makes sense one way. I'm trying to figure out how do you get out of this interaction that this is an Israelite? But no, nah, brother, see, you got to read Hosea, and Hosea tell you that he said the people that aren't people going to be not a people. All right, let's run with that. He's not a people. Let's keep reading. Let's ignore the fact that he said not in another nation, even though it's a devout Israelite that actually is the same nation as him. Let's ignore that. Therefore, uh, therefore came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for. I asked, therefore... For what intent you have sent for me? Mm -hmm. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting unto this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, mm -hmm. and said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard, and your alms are had in remembrance of the sight of God. Mm -hmm. Send therefore to Joppa, and call here Simon, whose surname is Peter. Mm -hmm. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he comes shall speak unto you. Mm -hmm. Immediately therefore I sent to you, and you are well done that you are come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all the things that are commanded, commanded thee of God? Then Period. Peter, we all here to learn the word. Right? He said, I brought everybody together, and we trying to learn the word with his Israelite self. Watch this. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. He said, God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. I don't know why he's talking about every nation. They are the same nation, but let's just ignore that. Keep going. Watch this. The word which God has sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yahushua. He, <laughs> he said to the children of Israel, preaching peace, what? <coughs> Preaching peace by Yahshua, he is Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. I don't know why he mentioned the Lord of all. It's two Israelites talking. I don't even know why he mentioned that, but let's ignore that too. Let's just keep going. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judah and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Uh-huh. How God anointed Yahshua of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Mm -hmm. And went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Uh-huh. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Right, the man they said, slew the and man hanged said, on a tree. We are witnesses. He trying to tell him, man, I was there. 
Right? Keep going. Watch this. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Mm -hmm. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. Mm -hmm. The yeah. alive, the living, and the dead. He said to be the judge of the quick and dead. That means the living and the dead. Keep going. To him give all the prophets, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. That's right. While Peter yet spake these words. While Peter yet spake these, I just want to make sure this makes sense with this being an Israelite. While Peter yet spake these words. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Uh-huh. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So now let's just say for the sake of argument that this is an Israelite. And when it says Gentiles, that's talking about Israelites that were Hellenized. Although this particular Israelite wasn't Hellenized because he was devout in the same God of the Israelite nation. But all right, that's confusing. Forget it. We're moving past that. The spirit fell on them, and those Israelites that were of the circumcision were surprised at this. Although, just a few chapters ago, when Peter was preaching, he said that this is something that God gave to Israel. To Israel. Even though Yahushua told them to go after the lost tribes of Israel. So if their mission is to go get Israel, why is this surprising? Why is he saying this is another nation? And why is he calling them a Gentile? Why is he calling them a Gentile? No, my friends, my Hebrew Israelite friends, stop it. You complicate this stuff way more than it need to be, and you got to go through all these gymnastics in your brain to make all this stuff work. And that's why you got the whole book off. Just sit down and take it for what it say. I know you don't like Gentiles. I know they did some stuff. To, listen, I get it. I know you don't want them to have a piece of it. I know you don't want them to try to co-opt our stuff like they've done all these years. I get it. But we can't lie on the book just because we don't like these people.